guys now we're back again with Carlos and we have something very very interesting I actually personally found this to be one of the most interesting product of this show Carlos what is this unit we call it the Apex what everybody wants to know is it tests alkalinity mm -hmm. it tests calcium it tests magnesium okay potassium so that's the, the that's what this tests for the first unit right this machine, okay, so let's break it down. Yeah. The top of the machine, mm -hmm. the this box, tests for calcium. Okay. It also has the pumps for dosing controllers. So if your calcium is low, your alkalinity is low, the machine knows exactly how much to dose into your tank to get it up to level. Okay. Kind of like a typical, you know, um, uh, alkalinity testing machine nowadays. Right, right. The bottom part, okay. that's, the, that's the good part. Right, this right, is the right. one that everybody wants to see. Right. The bottom part, in the inside, there is a way for it to test potassium, alkalinity, I mean potassium, calcium, and magnesium. You know, but I, I actually saw the probe yesterday, and um, I think we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Yeah. I, I also saw nitrates. In yes, there. you did, nitrates and all that. Well, the way this machine tests, it also uh -huh. do nitrates, and we're actually working on testing salinity too. Okay, all right. Yes, yes. And the importance of salinity, we've been talking to the manufacturer about this, and the- oh, salinity the, is imp extremely important. Yes, because based on your salinity, mm -hmm. your levels of calcium, your readings could change. Definitely. Exactly. So, no, you know, and this is where the end user, us, yes, and we are distributors, but at the end of the day, we also are end users. We use our own things where the end user comes and says, hey, you should test for salinity because it'll allow you to get even better results on your other elements. How many elements in, in total do you think this will be testing for? Right now, we're, we're starting with calcium, magnesium, and potassium. Gotcha. Nitrate, we are kind of working on it right uh -huh. now. It's a little more difficult to test for nitrates. Salinity, we have to do a little bit of uh, programming and math, mm -hmm. but those are the ones that we're going to start with. Mainly, again, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. Gotcha. And then what really piqued my interest in this unit? Because right now, everything that's coming out, everything has been reagent-based. Yes. One thing that really got me intrigued was this one was not. No. Talk, talk to me about that. Okay. So it's a little bit of compli it's a it's a little bit of a complicated answer. Yeah. All right. Magne uh, alkalinity. You need reagent. Right. There has to be a reagent that brings the pH down on the water until a point where the test is done. Right. So there's no way around it. So this machine does need a reagent to test uh, for alkalinity. Okay. But when it comes to calcium, magnesium, and potassium, it doesn't need any reagent because it uses an ionic probe. Gotcha. So the ionic probe has everything inside the probe mm -hmm. to test without having to do a reagent. Mm -hmm. The best thing about it, which is I like it about it, is that the moment you take me out of the equation, the moment you take the human out of the equation, right. is much better. Because then the machine will work. Yeah. Because sometimes, always. you know, it's like... A lot of times it is user error. Yeah. yeah. No, well, I'm not saying user error, but sometimes it's like I'm missing a reagent, and all of a sudden yeah. my wife screams and says, Carlos, did you get the laundry done? And I'm like, yes, hon. And then I go back and say, oh, crap, what did I do now? Was it, was it this? What, you know, so you get distracted. Yeah, or right. you know, you're doing something and you do like, you know, like you're supposed to do four drop and you get like four and a quarter drop or four exactly. and a half drops or something. Life happens. Right. Not on purpose, but I'm saying. So the moment you take us, the humans, out of the equation, right. the machines become a little more accurate because then yes. the machines do exactly what they're supposed to do. What I also noticed that for accuracy, I heard that this was based upon ICP testings. Yes, to... yes. So what this thing does, and it works like a lab machine, okay. all right? So the ionic, the ionic probes run tests on the water. Okay. But then every so often, you have to run a calibration fluid. Calibration fluid is a fluid that has a known quantity in there. Right. So let's say you run a calibration fluid that has 400 ppm of calcium. Mm -hmm. You run it through the machine, and then you check that the, ionic, the, that the probe is actually testing 400 ppm. Right. You know, if it doesn't, then you make the adjustment so that 400, so that the, the, the probe knows that this is 400 now, and then you continue testing, which is what ICP machines do. Right. ICP machines run tests on your water, right. but every now and then they stop, run through a, run tests through a set none of standards, yeah. 
they make their adjustments and then do it again. Gotcha. So that's what the machine does. So that's why you see these bottles in here. They're not reagents. They're calibration fluids to make sure that the probe is reading accurately. With probes, they don't. What's the lifespan of these probes? Okay, so ionic probes don't work like pre-aged probes. Okay, you can actually grab an ionic probe and test it for a, over a year without any problems. So you can test once a day. You can test 30 times a day. They'll last you for over a thousand tests. So and and then and then the probes that the probes themselves they're very tiny. Okay, and all they do is and I'm going to show you right here. Right here, there's this little tiny little probes in there. I don't yeah. know if you can zoom in there, but you probably will be able to. Yeah. And then you just grab that probe, replace it with a new one, and then you're done. And how much does a usually like a probe will cost? Or we don't we don't have that price on that yet. Uh, we're hoping that it's only twenty uh, about twenty dollars. Oh wow! Yes. So if it lasts about three four years and one probe. Well, I wouldn't say three four years. I'm gonna say an average about a year. Okay. An average about a year. But again, a year for twenty dollars. Yes, that's that's. that's I mean, there's no machine out there that does it right now. The reagent itself, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then just for the convenience and stuff like that, you know. There's, yes, exactly. Yeah. It's got app. Um, uh, and you can access all the data through that. Okay. It's got Wi-Fi, you know, and, and built-in dosers. And built-in dosers. Like I said at the beginning, you know, you can actually yeah. do what you want. So it's a great machine. We wanted to do something completely different. Everybody out there is coming out with their machines and they're using probes or reagents. And it's like let's 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 do something completely different that nobody else has done. Yeah. And actually ionic probes are not a new technology. Mm -hmm. They've been around for, for for a long time and they're used on labs all the time. I guess the next big question on this mm -hmm. is when is this coming out and how much does it cost? Estimate. Yes, well the uh, we don't have a we don't have pricing yet. Okay. We're, we're still having to work that out. Okay. okay? Um, uh, because all it all comes down to um, uh, buying bulk. Okay. So if we if the demand is there, the more numbers we the the the, 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 the higher the demand, it allows us to bring the price down. Right. You know. Course. So that's how it works. Yeah. In terms of when it's coming out, we are hoping, and we're really working hard. And this is a working unit. Right. This is actually a working unit. Yeah. We're hoping that it's ready before Magna 2019, which is only a couple months, from, which is only about a few months from now. Wow, that's incredible. And this, this I was thinking because he said, it was, oh, this is a prototype, Richard. I was thinking maybe like next year, but it's a few months now. No, no. And we actually wow. have the manufacturer here, the developer of it, in here. He speaks Spanish only, so okay. he, that's why he asked me to step in. Gotcha. Um, uh, but yo, I, I asked him also, I says, are you sure? And he says, yes, we yeah. will have it done by the summer. Wow. Yeah, he's from Spain. Spain is probably gonna have it a little bit sooner than that. The US will follow. I'm gonna bother you at every trade show from this forward <laughs> of this point on to see please, how this one up. Please do so, that's what we're hoping. We're yeah. just hoping, I think 2019 is a big year for four of you. We have a lot of good products. And at the end of the day, the end user benefits from all. Yeah. From the hydros yeah. to the septa, yeah. we're hoping to, that, that we can make it something good for the for the hobbyists. Well, Carlos, thank you so much for having me. You're well, very welcome. Show. And then you'll be the first one to know as soon as, as soon as we got more information on this. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Gotcha. That's all there is to it. Gotcha. Oh, Ricardo. Kill me, man. Come on, man. You gotta put a sign or a cheer there.